Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. For today's video, we're gonna continue with our series on how to do lost wax casting. Um, and so we're going to be doing the molding and injecting process. This is basically the most important process or arguably the most important process uh, in lost wax casting and casting in general, because this is how you're gonna be able to make your multiples for your products. Uh, so Dan already has the ring that we're going to be showing you today all screwed up here, and I believe this is in uh, brass or bronze rod. Uh, and from here, we're going to mold this um, and then inject its duplicates. Um, so let's jump into the portion Dan's gonna do, showing you how to mold it, uh, and then we'll come back to me later and I'll show you how to use this to inject your molds. Hey guys, so this is what we're gonna be molding today. This is uh, a sterling silver ring uh, that I've attached the um, a bronze uh, sprue rod to. And uh, we're just gonna jump right in. So what we're using is uh, No Shrink Pink by Castaldo. And uh, it's a natural rubber uh, material. And uh, as the name suggests, it is um, it has no shrinkage. So some of the other ones that they offer, they, um, they, they say it has like a 1% or 2% shrinkage rate. And uh, you know, you kind of have to think about that if you're gonna be molding, you know, a size eight ring or something, then it's gonna end up becoming more like a size seven and three quarters or something like that. So um, this stuff, it, uh, it's really good. It, uh, it does require a very, very exact temperature to vulcanize and, and that temperature is uh, 310 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, yeah, aside from that, I, I love this stuff. This is the only stuff I actually use and uh, I've had really good success with it. So this stuff comes in 1 8 inch sheets, and uh, as you can see, I'm cutting it with a clean pair of scissors. It's very vital that uh, you keep everything clean with this stuff. So I'm avoiding touching the uh, the flat surfaces with my, my fingers, because, you know, natural finger oils will uh, contaminate it. And um, it'll, it'll keep it from adhering. So what the vulcanizing process does is it, it kind of um, it cooks the rubber, and it adheres all these layers together into one piece. So uh, as you can see, I'm pushing all the edges together and making sure there's no bubbles in between because those will, um, they won't necessarily get to get worked out in the, in the process. And um, yeah, so this mold frame that we're using is three quarters of, inch, of an inch thick. And as I said before, these are one eighth inch uh, sheets. So what we're going to do is use three pieces on uh, the top and three pieces on the bottom. And uh, this stuff here that I'm using is a mold separation cream. Um, there's two ways that you can do molds and uh, one of them is with this cream stuff. It, basically what it does is it keeps the two pieces from adhering. Uh, if you've ever done any sand casting you know that you kind of use the um, use the talcum powder or baby powder or whatever you use to uh, separate the two halves. Uh, this is the same principle it's just kind of like a talcum powder in a cream form so you can get it in all the little nooks and crannies. Something else worth noting is this is the bottom layer of the mold sandwich, and um, this is what's going to hold the bronze, or, or rather, this is what the bronze sprue rod is going to sink into. So you can see that little bend there. That's going to go into the uh, the creamed side, which means that I won't have to do any cutting whatsoever. It's going to kind of fold over as it expands in the uh, vulcanizer, and uh, all of that will just become free. It, it won't have any uh, any cutting necessary at all. So um, I've slipped the uh, this mold or this model into um, the cone and what that cone does is it just creates the uh, the shape of the nozzle for the wax injector and that just keeps everything nice and airtight when it's all being uh, injected with the molten wax. So uh, because this doesn't require any cutting whatsoever uh, I'm going to be using mold locks and uh, mold locks are these little punched out brass things and uh, what they do is you just kind of stick them in the corners or, or literally wherever you want and um, they mold the rubber during the vulcanizing process into a small cone which then connects with the top mate of the mold and uh, that keeps everything all nice and aligned properly. The When you do the, the cutting process there's um, there's a good chance that you'll be using a scalpel. And what you do is you go in from the sides and you kind of have to do some tricky uh, maneuvering and, and cutting of these little nodules. And um, they're great. The, either method is fine. I haven't had any real trouble with these. 
uh, they work just as well as the as the cutting method, if not better, because they're they're so much simpler and, and a little bit uh, less time consuming and, and technical. So we're just going to fast forward through this next little bit because uh, you've already seen what it's like to put together uh, one of the halves. Uh, it's pretty boring. But uh, something to note is that uh, I'm putting two of the smooth sides together because uh, there's one side on here that's got a diamond texture on it. And uh, sometimes, not often, but sometimes the uh, the diamond can, can impress into the mold itself and you can get a, a light impression on the, the ring, which we don't want. So um, I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on this sandwich, set everything so it kind of makes a, an impression, and then carefully uh, put it back or put it into the, the vulcanizer, which has been preheating this entire time, and uh, make sure it gets pushed all the way in because the, uh, the outer edges can be a little bit cooler. So we want it to be nice and even and hot throughout. On these older machines, uh, you can see this is pretty aged. Um, sometimes the top and the bottom platter isn't quite the same temperature. So at about 20 minutes, I'm going to flip them and do another 20 minutes. So uh, here's a better angle of the uh, pressure being put down onto the mold. Uh, the, the rubber itself during this process is going to kind of pancake out everywhere. Uh, it'll kind of spread out to the sides. And if you don't have anything in that hole, it will come in like it'll, it'll spaghetti out of that hole. So um, we're going to take the pressure off, turn the machine off. Uh, I'm going to pull it out with pliers because, again, it is 310 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very hot. And uh, put it onto the rag, which is going to protect the finish on my wood tabletop. And uh, the these steel plates, they don't really stick. They just kind of lightly adhere, and they pop off without much effort. But, uh, but again, be very careful. They are hot. So I'm just going to take the plates off, put them back in the vulcanizer, and let them cool off naturally with the machine. Uh, at this point, this is kind of where you'd want to take professional advice and maybe let it air cool by itself, but I'm impatient, and for the sake of the video, I'm just going to pop them out by uh, pressing with the rag uh, on the side that has the least amount of spread out material, and uh, then pop the, uh, the, the mold frame back into the, uh, the, the vulcanizer with the rest. The, uh, the extra material on the side is kind of a guarantee that you've got enough material to... Um, or rather, you have enough material spread out internally, and, and that's basically just filling in all the voids, and uh, all of this stuff can just be cut off with a pair of scissors, and uh, you can write on this rubber with, uh, with a Sharpie or a pen or something just to mark it and make sure it's all uh, cataloged accordingly so you know what's in what. So the mold's all nice and cleaned up now. Uh, here's the magic of this uh, separation cream right here. You can see it peels apart like a banana. It requires very little effort. Uh, the you can actually like you know leave a spot like on the very end there and kind of make like a flap if you wanted to. Um, that's entirely up to up to you. It depends on the design really. Um, I did put the mold locks on the wrong side. I put them on the separated side, which means that they came out the way they did. Um, but not the end of the world. I can always just slot them back in and uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So this is kind of that thing I was talking about by putting the, uh, the sprue rod on the, the separated side. Uh, made a nice little release, but uh, you see there's some extra rubber that I want to remove. So we're going to go over to the soldering station and uh, this might not be the most recommended thing, but uh, it does work wonders. And um, yeah, so I'm going to use this broken file which the, the handle is approximately the same size as my sprue. And uh, under ventilation, very important, because this stuff really stinks when you press it on, I'm going to literally melt the, the, the rubber away. Um, I think what happened is there was a little bit of a gap between the, uh, the sprue and the cone, and it just made a little flap that would inhibit the wax uh, as it's injected. So I'm just going to press this hot piece of metal into the rubber, and um, it just kind of melts away in this gross smelling beige fluid stuff and uh, it wipes off with a cloth no problem uh, this method it might not be the the most recommended but it does do wonders it can save you a lot of time or or it can help you fix a mold that may or may not have worked out exactly as it should have so uh, yeah we're just going to take off a little bit of this material and uh, spread it open wipe away that extra rubber and uh, we'll give it over to Shannon so she can do the injecting. Now that 
we have the mold for our ring from Dan, all nice and new, and it's been talc uh, so that the wax will release nicely. We're going to launch in to how to inject it. So the injection pot is all ready to go. Um, the wax is nice and warm. I usually have the pot around 200 degrees. Um, and when I'm doing these molds, I usually have around three molds ready to go. Uh, by the time I've done the third mold and injected it, the first mold has cooled down and the piece is ready to take out, uh, like the piece you can see here. So as probably has been said before in the video, uh, these are vulcanized rubber molds. You can also get a two-part uh, cold setting molds called liquid cast. There are others probably available out there on the market, uh, but that's what these are made out of. And they're great for when you're dealing with a wax master like this one is, uh, or possibly an organic item that can't withstand the heat like the other mold was, which was a bear claw. If you want to see how we make our liquid cast pour molds, just leave a comment down below. Now let's get into doing our first injection. So we're going to be taking a plate and putting one on the top and the bottom. Uh, these plates here are a little bit thick, but they get the job done uh, with DIY, you never know. Uh, and we're going to be taking a clamp that has parallel jaws on it so we can get a nice accurate and even pressure all the way along. Uh, and we're going to be clamping that together. Um, I have to do it on the table because these clamps are a little bit tough. These are actually from an old GoPro, uh, but there are specific clamps out there for this setup. We just don't have any at the moment. So I'm going to be purging the wax that is actually in the pump at the moment uh, so I can get some slightly hotter wax to be able to inject. As you can see there, you can actually get quite a lot of pressure even though it's just a hand pump system. So I usually push down the plunger until I feel a change in pressure and from there I will still apply a slight bit of pressure just to keep the wax uh, pushing into the mold. After you've held the pressure for about 10 or so seconds, uh, you're going to want to take the mold away uh, and set it upside down with the inlet uh, facing upwards. There's no risk of the wax coming back out, but you certainly don't want the wax to kind of pull away from your details inside your mold. With the ring injected, I'm going to continue on injecting my chain links from the other molds. So the wax we're using today is ferrous turquoise wax. Uh, this wax is a medium harness wax, so it's pretty tough. Uh, we've been doing a lot of chains lately, so we put this in so we don't have to worry about breaking them when we're taking them out of the mold or working with them. Um, this wax also has a release agent in it, so that means it's easier to take from the mold. Uh, you can get waxes that are specific to carving, uh, that are higher temperature melting waxes, so they're good for filigree and really dainty uh, models. So basically you need to tailor the wax you're using to the project that you want to do. So now that the molds are all injected, I'm going to go back and check my first mold. Uh, and you'll notice, of course, that when the wax is solid uh, and cold, it's going to be a brighter uh, and more opaque color. Whereas when it is still warm, it's going to be a darker and more transparent kind of uh, look to it. So now that it's, I know it's cooled down, I'm going to start to open it and see what it looks like. So I'm going to start opening the mold by lifting away at each of the corners. Uh, generally, some molds work best if you open it from a specific direction, depending on how you put the model in the mold, uh, and that's generally the side that we put our label on. Um, so as you can see, I'm pulling at those corners, and I'm go slowly going to pull the top off, uh, revealing how well our wax turned out. Uh, if it's not that great, you can always just pull it out and chuck it back in the injector, but as you can see, it turned out pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to put a quite a bit of pressure on each of the sides, pop out the sprue and then pop out the ring itself. So if you want to know how to sprue and tree uh, the injections that you just did or maybe some hand carved waxes, we have a video on how to do that already posted to the channel. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like our videos in general, please remember to click that notification bell. Uh, we don't post all that often, so it's gonna come in handy. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys next time.